All right, there we are. Oh, hey, don't, don't steal my show. All right, hello everyone. A geek nerd and dork talks to you quickly about users. I might be a little less than six minutes. So, my name is Alexander Ray. Like she said, like she said I am the technology director at Skinny. Quick question for you, has anyone built something that didn't work? I spend the majority of my, thank you for raising hands out there in the audience. I spend the majority of my time building things and sometimes equal or more time trying to fix the, those things that were built because something wasn't thought about. Sometimes I try to do enough planning in the beginning so that we don't have to spend equal or more time at the end trying to fix something because we didn't think about the user. I build good things, good, capital G, capital all capital letters, I put a lot of emphasis on good. These days, everyone's trying to do good, social good, good with food, good with people, save the planet, something. For me, I'm just trying to build good things. And what I mean by that is, can it work for everybody? Am I building a digital experience that will work, that will make everybody comfortable? Because people, I believe, don't remember when something works, they remember when it doesn't work. I don't want my client to build a campaign, or I don't want to build a campaign for my client that doesn't work for everybody. I focus on building the technology. I focus from the back to the front. I don't focus on the creative and the strategy and the marketing objectives and the production costs or measurement or the scalability initially, though I understand that they all fit together. They're all part of the very important system. We want to sell that to the client at all times. I focus on the source code. There's all this fun stuff right here. Um, maybe some of you have ever seen it. Maybe some of you don't. But this, th this is where I play in this world. I start at the very, very back of the digital experience and I go to the front. We sell the client on the, on the creative, in the advertising business, we sell the client on the creative and the idea. Great, big, beautiful presentations, but eventually something has to get built. An iPhone application, an Android app, a website, a kiosk in the perfume department at a department store. What is the technology behind that? Who is the user that's going to be using this application? Anybody know who this guy is? Anyone out there? Online, anybody? No? Tim Berners-Lee. Anybody know what Tim Berners-Lee did? He's done a few things, but anybody know? Thank you, in the front. Thank you very much. Follow-up question, do you know how long ago that was? Thank you. Say that again for the room. Yep, about 20, 22 years ago, exactly. I think most of us were probably around at that time. He has many, many quotes out there, and this is one of my favorite quotes. The power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. I believe, like I said earlier, that I want to build good things, and I want to make sure that everybody can view that. I know for a fact that you know, there are very, very popular websites that are out there that cost millions and millions of dollars, but in the last year, 40,000, 50,000 users couldn't view that experience, whether or not that means because they were on a device that could not view the technology that was used to build that website. Let's say it's Flash. Well, you just had 10,000 people look at your site with an iPhone. They just missed it. So all your marketing objectives and the fact that you want to sell your product and you want to gather email addresses was lost because they couldn't see it. They got some sort of error. I don't want the user to ever get an error when they look at something that I built. Technology. We'll do a little brief history here. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm a geek and I geek out on history. I think it kind of helps put things in perspective. In the 60s, we had this. In the 70s, we had this. Move, moving up into 84, obviously people might recognize this. 20 years, we had all these great innovations. 
Palm Pilots to iPhones to now all the iPhones and other mobile devices that are out there, all this technology that's out there that your user is using, how, how are you going to build one online experience that works for everybody? There's an article in the New York Times. I definitely recommend you checking it out, talking about, oh, there's Microsoft and Nokia team up. What is that going to mean for Apple? Another great article, HTML5 for mobile apps. Lots of press coverage out there. I mean, weekly, there's something, at least in the New York Times, about the, the tech space, all this great new stuff that's going on, all these great new devices that are out there. Does anybody know what this logo is? I don't, I don't expect you to. It's the World Health Organization. Thank you. World Health Organization in 2002 says 161 million people are visually impaired. Why am I getting to this? I'll get there in, in, in a moment. Out of that, 37 million of those are blind. How do those 37 million people use what you just built online? Great application. Well, if you didn't think about the iPhone user who's going to look at your Flash site, you probably didn't think about how someone blind is going to look at your website. They're out there. You know, they want to buy shoes, toothpaste. Why aren't you considering them? Large corporations, I won't, I won't go into who, have been sued. They've gone to litigation. We live in a very litigious society here. I don't want my client to get some class action documentation in the mail because we didn't think about, oh, we have this audience and they're blind and they need to come to our site and need to buy something. Oh, they, they can't. They get an error. There's no messaging at all to support their experience. So it comes down to knowing your user's technology. Like I said, I start to think of every project from the back to the front. I try to think of the user, and I try to think of everybody. I try to build the good application and think of all of the users that are out there. So how do we know our user's technology? There's so many different ways this could go. Again, I bring up this quote. This is one of my favorite quotes. You, you might see it again. You have all these guys that, that are out there on your desktop. All these web browsers. Well, believe it or not, these web browsers, each one looks at the web a little differently. Your client most likely has Internet Explorer. Why? Well, it's supported by their IT group. They have some enterprise deal where they pay for support, and it's easy for them. They don't have to think too much about supporting all these various different kind of browsers because they, they, they support the Microsoft solution. They've got XP in their office, and they have Internet Explorer. But guess what? Internet Explorer doesn't look at the new stuff out there the same way that Chrome does. Opera, which is that top right logo, you may have never even used it. That's a fantastic web browser. Why haven't you used it? February 2011 showed a 44% adoption rate for Internet Explorer, 29% for Firefox, and uh, almost 14% for Chrome. This is US numbers. It's from Wikipedia. Wikipedia actually has a handful of very, very decent stat pages on platform usage and browser usage. Again, you can see Internet Explorer is, has a significant share still. If you're doing a global campaign, you, you go to, say, China, you're actually going to find more people using Internet Explorer. And guess what? They're not going to be using the latest version either. They're going to be using 6. Well, guess what? Internet Explorer 6 doesn't help anybody. It hardly loads anything that's out there today. I work on projects where I have to support Internet Explorer 6. What does that mean? Well, that means we sometimes have to do a completely different application entirely, just so the person on Internet Explorer 6 can see the page. Because trust me, you're going to launch this site and you're going to get a phone call. Oh, somebody in engineering has IE6. Well, guess what? You need to support it. And desktop usage real quick. Again, this is uh, US numbers. This is the Microsoft and Apple data. You know, we, we're very privileged here in, in New York. A lot of us are uh, able to afford great devices, great technology, iPhones, iPads shiny MacBook computers with 
15 Apple stores here or something like that in, in New York alone. But guess what? That's not the rest of the world. And it's definitely not the rest of this country. So you have to think about the, the user and the technology that the user is using. You have to consider whether or not they're going to be using Flash or Silverlight. Again, uh, you know, what is your campaign going to use and what is the user going to be able to support? And of course, HTML5. I love HTML5 probably, primarily because it doesn't mean what people think it means. It's not a silver bullet. And no one ever talks about HTML1 through 4. HTML5 isn't even a, an official standard yet. It's really a fancy marketing term for a collection of new services and approaches that are out there, HTML and JavaScript. But people are treating it like it's some sort of new silver bullet. Well, guess what? It doesn't work in most versions of Internet Explorer that you're going to find in your client's office. And of course, there is Facebook. Everyone's probably used Facebook. Facebook, despite all of its faults, whatever they may be, and the security issues, and they're changing the profile around, it's a decent application. It actually works in all browsers and tablets. So somebody there was thinking. It's probably one of the main reasons I like Facebook is the fact that it actually is a well-built application. Not for the fact that you know, everybody might be on it or it might be the next greatest thing since sliced bread. It's a, it's a pretty well-built application. So, so there is hope out there. There's obviously all of this, all this stuff out there. All this technology globally, what are these people using? What are the devices and browsers they're using? There are these things called standards. Believe it or not, there's approaches that you can take for developing that you start off in the beginning and you follow standards. I'm not going to go into what those standards are, but I'll point out a couple of organizations here, one of them being the W3C, founded by Tim Berners-Lee, go figure, kind of ironic. This organization's main purpose is to develop standards for web development. Standards that take into effect that here are some steps you could take to make sure that this application that you are building is going to work for everybody. Write this down. Oops, excuse me. Let's go back. Write this down and Google it, please. The um, Web Accessibility Initiative. And that's not going to work right, so we're going to jump to the next one. And Section 508. Whoops, it's moving a little bit too fast for me. Let's keep up. Nope. Okay, W3C, we did that. Write it down. Okay, Web Accessibility Initiative, and it's going to go right to Section 508. And then we're going to recap. But let me just talk about those two things real quick. Web Accessibility Initiative, I'd love for you to write this down and Google it later, and also Section 508. Both of those are two things that are out there that sooner or later you're probably going to run into. You're going to do a website that, whoops, it needs to work for a government organization. Well, guess what? That is going to probably fall under Section 508, which is an uh, amendment to the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 that says that all government websites must be accessible by the handicapped. That means screen readers. That means in, in OS 10, there's a whole universal access section that you've probably not been to that has a voiceover option. Gives the, the computer the ability to read and talk to you and speak the website to you. If you turn that on and you go to some of your popular websites, some award-winning websites, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to read the website. If you had to comply with Section 508, you would have to do a completely different version of that website for people that are handicapped. It's not rocket science. But when you're six months in and you're about to go live, it's a little bit difficult to revamp the entire process. You think about it in the beginning. Ask those questions. Web Accessibility Initiative, look it up. It's part of the W3C. It's an organization with a lot of people around the world that are trying to make it very easy for developers to think about accessibility guidelines, the right kind of questions to ask. It's a little bit technical. It's not the most sexy website out there, but it's got very good information. I think it's very important for everyone to know. So in the recap, everyone should be able to access the information online regardless of who they are. Obviously, you kind of get that gist. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, but what about tablets? You know, I've, I've not spoken too much. I've talked about browsers and desktops, and I just want to touch briefly on tablets. We all know who this guy is, uh, passed away recently. 
you could argue that he created a whole new way of thinking, and you can argue that he's, you know, he, uh, him and his, you know, and, and the Think Different movement changed a lot of things. I'm not going to get into that. That's a, that's a separate talk. But what he did do was, you know, he came out with this device right here, the iPad. I, I don't know how many people thought about tablets before the iPad came out, but I wasn't really too big on them. They were out there. I mean, Apple tried to do something forever ago. They, they came out with a tablet that didn't work. But I can see people in here have this, and it's kind of changed the game a little bit. How many other companies are coming up with tablets right now? And how big a share does the iPad have in that market? But he, he came out with a statement. You don't have to read the whole thing, but this thing doesn't support Flash. As I mentioned, that's one technology that's out there that a lot of people use. Posted a letter to Adobe, basically saying, I'm not going to support this. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Who knows what's going to happen with, with Apple's agenda, but this tablet, this iPad, is not going to see some of the big websites that are out there that cost millions of dollars to be produced. So there's a different type of user that is using the tablets, the iPads, and everything else, because there, there are other tablets that are out there. And one of the interesting things is that these devices are helping people find a voice. There's 60 minutes from uh, October 23rd, which I definitely would suggest. I know shameless plug for 60 minutes, but the, the episode from October 23rd is a little bit about Apple, and also talks about how tablets are helping autism and Asperger individuals find a voice. Because this device, touching a screen, opens up a whole world to them that, that never existed. They, a mouse on a screen didn't work, I don't know why, but the tablet works, gives these people a voice. That's a user that's out there, the tablet user. They'll, in, in not far from now, it'll only be tablet users, who knows? So what do we do? We can focus on thinking about everyone that's out there. Everyone's not using a shiny MacBook Pro on an iPhone. Someone's on a junky old PC running some old version of Internet Explorer. There's no silver bullet. Every project is different. Every client is different. Every user is different. You just need to consider that in the beginning. So let's start thinking less about the technology and more about the user. Thank you.